Gosh, this big old belly. There we go. Okay. Hi, how are you? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Summer Myers. I am a homeschool mom of soon to be six kids. So yes, we are pregnant with our sixth baby and to change things up a little bit, we have decided that we're not gonna find out what the baby is actually. So if you wanna play along, go ahead down in the comments below and comment what baby gender you think it is. Is it a boy or is it a girl? Or is it a puppy? I don't know, it could be a pterodactyl, I have no idea. The way this baby has kept me up in the middle of the night just doing somersaults and circles and everything, I mean, my gosh, I really, Honestly, I have no idea. I felt intuition with all of my all of my girls. I knew we we're gonna be girls. And when I was pregnant with Henry, I was like, yeah, something's different. This is a boy. But this time around, guys, I got nothing. I have no clue <laughs> what this baby is. I do know I have like five bins of girl clothes and five bins of boy clothes, and I am so excited to get rid of one of those bins. <laughs> as soon as this baby is born, I'm gonna be like, cleaning out, you know what I mean? So if you would like, I would love if you would go ahead and list off what you think the baby is. Also, uh, baby name suggestions, I'm always up for that because as you know, I already have five children. All of them have middle names. I love all their names and I, I got nothing. I am out of ideas, so go ahead, tell me, tell me what you would name a sixth baby. In this theme of being pregnant with new baby, I thought it would be great to do a video about homeschooling through pregnancy. Story time. I have done this twice now where I have been pregnant and homeschooling. And my first time around, I was just kind of fumbling along. I was still trying to figure out homeschooling at the time. So I wasn't as seasoned as it as it were. I hate the ref I hate it when people refer to themselves as seasoned. It makes me feel like you know, roast beef. That's my pregnancy brain talking. This second time around, I was really intentional with my pregnancy and coming into homeschooling and what that was going to look like and taking a season of rest. And I found a lot of helpful tips and ideas and I thought I'd share them with you today. I am going to be operating under the assumption that you are looking at this while you are feeling really sick and tired. My first half of my pregnancy, I was just like, ugh just like bleh, <laughs> so sick. And I physically could not do the things that I normally do. I really just wanted to lie in bed. I did not feel up for what we normally did. And so with that in mind, I decided to be so intentional with my pregnancy. This was a season where I was going to be taking it easy and that was okay. And I know that it wasn't gonna last for much longer. It was only a couple of months and there were things that I could do that would make homeschooling very successful still. Practical tips. This is the time to get your read alouds out. Lay your sick, tired body out on the bed and just read to your kids out loud. It can be fiction, it can be nonfiction. I know you've got a book outlet box somewhere that you got last summer of good intentions, good intentions, and you wanted to read these books to your kids. This is the time to do it, girlfriend, where you are just reading the books that you loved growing up, reading the books that you were wanting to focus on. If you don't have a list, I'll link a playlist down below of several book lists that I have. This summer, I'll be putting together a playlist of read alouds that we have loved and enjoyed this past year, so be sure to check that video out when it comes out. This is also a great time to ask your kids what they have been reading. What did they really love this year? What books would they like you to read out loud to the rest of the family? And we have found several family favorites based on their book recommendations, which has led to multiple series and other interests and avenues that we have been able to explore. So ask your kids what they want you to read to them. They would love that. Okay, so read alouds, <laughs> fine and dandy, but there were some days where I could not open my mouth because <laughs> I was just like, no. Audiobooks, my friend. I have a green Bluetooth speaker that I just hooked up to my phone with my Libby app and I could just borrow as many audiobooks as we could possibly listen to and just listen to it. And frequently I would like fall asleep no, <laughs> I would. I would just lay there and I would just like drift off. And so all of my, I mean, little bodies and they're all snuggling you and you're in your bed and it was very soothing. And it's something that your body absolutely needs. So don't be afraid of that. Oh, I've got a screw loose. <laughs> that sounds so weird. There's a screw loose on my tripod and I'm, 
got to tighten it. And there are a couple of screws loose. In this season of life, when you are pregnant and homeschooling, this is a really great time to hone into one particular thing without the destruction or destruction, <laughs> without the distraction of a larger curriculum and other pressing subjects. So I looked at each of my children and looked at particularly things that they had been struggling with, whether that was spelling, addition, fractions, reading, whatever it was. And I said, this is the time when we're gonna give you some extra love on this one thing. So rather than trying to hit all of the core subjects, I knew in my mind, we're just gonna focus for one month on just this. It gave me a chance to let things go that I normally wouldn't have if I had been my full and chipper self. And when that mom guilt set in, and it does, it comes in and it's like, hey, you remember me? You should be doing this. It, when that would happen, I would say, no, my child needs extra love in this and I need extra love. And together we're making a beautiful love circle and all of it will be great. And I saw instant improvement in all the areas that my kids had been struggling in for a while. And for a lot of reasons, that was really beneficial. And in fact, it might be something that I later include when I am not pregnant. But just having that month of just, I'm too sick to do anything, and you do need some of this extra attention, why don't we just do this for a little bit? Now, there are children who are doing fine. They're, they've steadily progressed and I have a couple of those. I'm very proud of them and, and they don't really need anything particular love in one particular thing. So we reviewed old concepts. They gained new insights and it also just made them more comfortable when, they were, when we were ready to go back to our regular curriculum. Don't be afraid to nap. We all need naps. If you're pregnant, you're gonna, you're gonna need a nap. <laughs> You've got all of your kids at home with you and you are pregnant, you should, you should nap. You should sleep it out. I frequently would pop in a documentary. Disney Plus has several really good documentaries. In fact, we just discovered one for our local NC Zoo, and I was like, hey, we should watch these. And I totally crashed. You need to be careful with documentaries because you don't want to just like pop stuff in that you, you haven't previously reviewed <laughs> and, and, and wake up and you know they're euthanizing a bear. That didn't happen. Actually, it did, but we're not gonna talk about it. I frequently popped in a documentary that I knew and I liked and enjoyed, and my kids had a chance to just watch it, and I took a nap on the bed, and I had them all around with me. Sometimes I would go into another room and listen for them, but taking that extra break of just extra sleep really helped us in the afternoons when I wasn't feeling my best. Another practical tip, put away the things that cause a huge mess. So I'm a huge proponent of Play-Doh and kinesthetic sand and watercolors, paints, acrylics. Guys, those make a mess. Girlfriend, let me tell you something, they make a huge mess. And having to physically clean up a project afterwards was kind of daunting. So the things that you know that cause a huge mess, whether that be craft supplies, whether that be Legos, whether that be, you know, I don't know, 2000 puzzles, I don't know, whatever. Put it away for a month or two until you're ready to go back and, and start helping cleaning those things up. I popped a lot of that stuff in the attic because I just did not want to have to deal with the mess that it created. And that was okay. There's no mom guilt there. I knew I was gonna get it out again, but for that time, it wasn't practical. You know what, we'll get this out in a couple months. It is not all rain clouds and thunderstorms when you are pregnant. There are days where you wake up and you're like, man, I feel awesome and you feel great. It would be so tempting and it was tempting to just hit the books and be like, hey, I feel great, let's do some stuff. And then you're just so burned out by the end of the day and then you're feeling it for the rest of the week. On those days where you feel fantastic, take advantage of those days to go and do something. Get your kids out of the house, go on a field trip that you've been wanting to do, go to the museum, call up a friend, ends up having a more positive and uplifting experience for you and your kids. Those good days are precious and should be taken full advantage of, so don't waste them hitting the books. Go outside, go do something fun together as a family. I decided that we would focus more on life skills. Things that I knew were going to be difficult for me while I was pregnant and after the baby came. 
baby is coming. There are going to be days where I can't clean the kitchen or I can't make dinner or I'm not going to be there first thing in the morning to make breakfast. So those are the skills that we focused on now, things that I was new from prior experience that I had difficulty doing with a newborn. And so that's what we focused on. And now my kids are very capable of cleaning the kitchen by themselves and loading the dishwasher and unloading it. They also know how to sort all their laundry and fold it and put it away. I mean, the folding is, I mean, let's be honest, they don't fold, but I just pretend. I just. I just pretend, I pretend they fold. They also are really getting good at cleaning our floors. We haven't tackled bathrooms because that's not something that I personally worry about. I think that's something I can do. But those little life skills that I knew I would need extra help on when we had a new baby is what we focused on. And now they're really good at it. And these last few weeks before the baby comes, I can focus on really getting our house ready without worrying about you know external cleaning. And I can focus on recovery after the baby comes, teach them those skills so they can help out and it will be a long-term benefit for them. The main takeaway here that I want you to have is that this is a season of rest and taking care of yourself. It is not a season of book work and it is not a season where you're going to get tons done. Let's be honest. That's okay, mama. That's okay. You're being intentional with your time and you're focusing in on what's important and you're preparing for a new arrival, which does tend to shake up a household. And there's nothing wrong with making that a priority and setting that up for smooth and easy transition. It'll be okay. And I'm really proud of you for tackling homeschooling while being pregnant. Homeschooling through the seasons of life. Yay! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe. Again, comment below. What do you think? Is Baby Myers going to be a boy or is Baby Myers going to be a girl? I'll let you know.